and when we talk about succession, what that means, it's, it's the natural progression, um, growth, and replacement of plant species over time. So if you have an old field, eventually it's going to become a mature forest. When we talk early successional habitat, that's in the very early stages of, of succession. So you're basically talking about uh, a very shrubby area. It's often very dense, very thick with cover, and often hard to walk through. But that dense, shrubby cover is exactly what some birds are looking for. So it's going to provide them really good protection and cover from predators, from weather, and it's also going to provide some really good nesting sites. I had started moving from being like a pure preservationist to understanding that by cutting trees I was helping out a combination of wildlife or forestry. And there is no doubt that a clear cut looks like a tornado went through or a bulldozer or something. It's, it's very visually jarring, but that's just what some wildlife is looking for. It's, it's, it's emulating the disturbance that a tornado or a really, really severe ice storm or a, a wildfire or something like that would have done where it just kind of resets the whole clock for the forest succession. My vision all along has been to do small clear cuts for the benefit of the wildlife, predominantly rough grouse. And now I've learned over all these years that there's lots of other species of wildlife that are benefited from those forestry practices. It's been really exciting to see the various species that, that dominate specific habitats, meaning whether it's mature forests or pulse, pole size stands or open clear cuts and early regeneration. So it's been really exciting to watch that progress. If anything, by, by taking out some, some trees here and there, it opens up little pockets of sunlight into the forest floor. And boy, oh boy, you can just tell the, the, the low level shrub layer of the woods is extremely dependent upon the sunlight gets down there. The, the patches where I've opened up through, in, through the selective harvest just has exploded in pokeberries and blackberries and black raspberries and spice bush, all kinds of little sassafras trees, things that need sunlight in order to get going. So there are certain species of birds that depend on early successional habitat as their primary habitat, meaning that they need it to survive. Species like the yellow-breasted chat and the field sparrow, their populations are actually declining because of a lack of early successional habitat. And there are a lot of other species that depend on early successional habitat as part of their habitat requirements. Species that a lot of us are familiar with, like the eastern, eastern bluebird, um, wild turkey, bobwhite quail, and the American kestrel. Indigo bunnings, yellow-breasted chat, uh, Towhees, certainly like clear cuts, red-bellied woodpeckers, flickers in the in the dead trees in the clear cut, pileated woodpecker, even though you would think of that as being more of a deep woods bird. House wrens, those wouldn't normally be in the woods, bluebirds. And one thing that's really important to realize is that these permanent or these habitats aren't permanent. Uh, research has shown that after about eight years, if we're talking in terms of a clear cut, after about eight years, those bird populations start to drop a little bit. So just as succession is naturally occurring, that early successional habitat will keep, keep progressing and changing, and those same resources won't be available. So providing early successional habitat, this is something that needs to be done continuously. So it's been a real, it's been a really interesting growth progression and to watch it has been really fascinating and truly has given me a better understanding of how perpetual the natural woodland environment in Ohio and probably most forests across the United States truly are.